This is an elite unit, the Tasmania Police Emergency and Rescue Squad. Twelve picked men, all volunteers, all highly trained in first aid and the many other specialised skills which can be so vital in an emergency. Despite their normal everyday police duties, members of the squad make time to practice together. Sergeant Tom Howard, in command of the squad, tells his frogman the object of today's exercise. Somewhere at the foot of this treacherous cliff near Hobart, a dummy is hidden underwater, and it's the job of the frogman to find it. When and if the dummy is found, it'll be brought up the face of the cliff to the top by cliff rescue experts. Many thousands of dollars worth of stolen goods have been recovered from the bottom of harbours, rivers and streams by these frogmen as part of their duties in the emergency and rescue squad. Experts on land as well as in water, the trained bushmen of the group organise and lead searches for missing hikers or jail escapees who have taken to the wild country. This exercise has an air of reality about it. The squad has many times been called upon to perform the macabre task of recovering bodies. Members of this squad are not full-time specialists. Their working day is spent on the beat, the fingerprinting section of the CIB, with the water police or the many other diversified activities within the police force. But when an emergency comes along, they are ready and able to demonstrate their skills. At the bottom of the cliff, the frogmen have found the dummy which was wedged deep in an underwater crevice. The shore party fires a rocket-propelled line gun to bring the dummy to shore. In a case of apparent drowning, such as this exercise portrays, immediate resuscitation is given with the portable resuscitator. Where time is the prime factor, the only way to get the victim quickly to aid is up the cliff. Despite the speed with which the squad lashed the victim to the stretcher, careful checks are made to see that fastenings are secure. It takes hours of practice to bring the squad to this peak of efficiency. Another exercise is finished successfully. Tomorrow, this could be the real thing. Let us examine the tools used by the squad. A fiberglass boat with outboard motor. The first aid kit. Each member of the squad must hold a first aid certificate. Ropes, tackle and pulleys for cliff rescue. Self-contained breathing apparatus for entering smoke or gas-filled buildings. Aqualungs for underwater work. A line-throwing rocket gun. The E and J resuscitator for drowning cases, which has also proved invaluable in asphyxiation cases. And on the more lethal side, riot guns, tear gas guns and other weapons in case the squad has to fight it out. A place for everything and everything in its place. The van is always ready to move at a moment's notice. Another day, another exercise. This time, a smoke-filled building. These men will try and find a dummy in an old blockhouse at South Arm near Hobart.
This exercise is dangerous. It's easy to become lost in a smoke-filled building and lifelines can become entangled around strange corners. Now they've been in there for a longer period than necessary and the sergeant is worried. Two more men enter the blockhouse. Time is running out fast. This time the exercise became a real rescue operation. One of the first men inside had trouble with the smoke despite his breathing apparatus. But the squad is ready for such a contingency. Once more the E and J resuscitator comes into its own. The cooling air pours into choked lungs in just the right mixture to combat the smoke. Recovery in this case is swift, thanks to special equipment and men who know how to use it. Now another situation, a desperate one brought about by a desperate man. The squad for this exercise are still in their white overalls instead of the neutral colour usually worn. They await the outcome of a stalemate. Cornered, the occupant of this house is well armed and intends to fight it out. He's been told to come out, that he can't win, but he's determined to try anyway. In a situation like this, tear gas is the answer. As the shell enters the house, it emits gas which causes the eyes to water violently. The second shot is true, and the gas becomes a thick vapour. The firing has ceased. Now to get the victim out. Even with tear gas, the squad are wary. The tactical position has changed. It's all on the police side now. One smart kick and the door falls in. Coughing with his eyes streaming from the effects of the gas, the struggling gunman is dragged from the building. This is the extreme in police rescue and emergency. This type of operation is rare, but it has happened. And should it happen again, the men of Tasmania's police emergency and rescue squad will be on hand to cope with the situation adequately and efficiently, just as they're trained to do with any emergency which may arise.